as well. So today um, we're going to do a different meeting. We normally do these webinars to talk about our services in length, but that's not what we're doing today. We really want to hone in on what the brands are doing, uh, looking at the marketing plan of uh, 2018, what needs to be done, how things are changing with the new generations coming into uh, that buying source of hotel rooms, making decisions. OTA brands, how are they doing? How are they still trying to shift share from the brand um, websites to the OTA and third-party sites for bookings and also the pilots that the brands have been doing specifically Marriott is what we're concentrating on today's meeting but we will also touch base on Hilton as well as IHG to show you what they have been doing as well and what the key is going to be um, going into the future 2018 and beyond as the millennials come to play uh, in that purchasing power. So just briefly, what our service is, what we are about. iResponse, we monitor um, all the communication that happens about your hotel out there, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And then we respond to those comments that are being said about your hotel, about their stay experience. And then in addition, we partnered ourselves uh, with uh, Review Pro. We are not a software company to go ahead and collect information. So if you're on a call today, I know some of you are at the corporate um, level. And if you want to see several brands in one dashboard, the Review Pro is excellent software for that. Uh, we could give you um, advice about that as well. And then, of course, obviously, the Review Pro equipping you with information. So with iResponse, um, our client promise is to monitor and respond to all respondable guest reviews. And we say respondable because, as we know, on Booking.com, um, if they have checked off that they don't want it to be responded to publicly, we have to literally, uh, in regards to that, adhere to that and just respond to the ones that do want to see a response publicly. And we do that with 24 to 48 hours or 72 hours based on brand standards for Hilton, Marriott, IHG, Choice, and so on and so forth. And then we do that with an authentic and engaging voice. We do not copy and paste. We hire individuals. Uh, from the industry uh, that really knows and understands the hospitality industry that's responding to every guest comment authentically. So again, we are a service provider first and foremost to hotels and restaurants. We're not an IT company or software. We're hoteliers with hospitality industry background. I myself included 38 years plus uh, from the industry. And we thoroughly understand the third parties and OTAs and how they've been changing our, our um, how we sell, how we do business, uh, how we can go ahead and direct occupancies to our hotels. And we take away that daily task from the general manager with all these um, mandates given to you by the brands, understand that as well thoroughly. And we take away that uh, anxiety of 48 hours, 24 hours, 72 hours and so you could take care of your guests and of course take care of the hotel running your hotels and we understand um like i said the softwares of all the brands because we are from the hospitality industry so we have extensive experience with medallia with guest voice and so on that we could help you with that just wanted to share quickly what our um, client base looks like right now by brand. As you could see, we do have heavy Marriott in there because we've been partnering with Marriott for about three years now. We did pilot studies with them for a year's uh, time back in 2016. And we're the only uh, third party Marriott approved vendor that can actually go ahead and respond on your behalf even for your guest reviews and surveys. And then in addition to that, we also do that for Hilton Hyatt, IHEA, and so on. So let's move on to now 2018 and beyond. So what is the generational buying behavior that we can expect and why is so many um, industries, including the hospitality industry, paying so much attention to the millennials or Gen Yers. So here's a quick question for you. Uh, between what years were the millennials or Gen Yers born in? Was it A, between 1961 and 1981? Uh, B, 97 to 2017, C, 45 to 65, or D, 79 to 1999. And if you guessed D, they were born uh, in the years of 79, between the years of 79 and 1999. Now, here's the reason why they're so important. 
by 2020, which is only two years away, um, they're going to be the 40% of U.S. adult workforce, and they're going to have an annual income of $6.2 trillion. So you could see why we have to really, truly pay attention to their buying behaviors, to the way they make decisions about purchasing hotel rooms and where they go to make those hotel reservations and so on, so that we do not lose out, especially specifically brands, and then the independent hotels keeping their share as well. So we really have to um, look into this. And if you're part of a brand, that's wonderful because they're actually doing this for you. So you'll get a lot of information throughout 2018 on what to do differently and so on. And then if you are a hotel in the leisure market, uh, keep in mind that those teenagers in your house or in your guest house are the ones who are really um, making a difference when family travels on vacation. So about 88% of um, where the family ends up on vacation is kind of uh, advised by their teenager or youth uh, within the household. So because they're very well-traveled, they've been to several um, you know, vacations or stays with their parents or with their grandparents. So they really understand adventure. They want to experience everything hands-on. Um, they want to see uh, and study prior to they get to that location. And here's one thing to note is they enjoy staying at private residences and boutique lodging because they really want to experience a location destination as somebody that would actually be living there. Um, and so they don't, they're not really necessarily uh, brand uh, savvy or understand that you're in your points and then you could go ahead and use them when you go on vacation and so on. So definitely need to keep an eye on that generation up and coming. And then we'll see what happens as they get into the buying power um, in the marketplace. So here is a study of TripAdvisor. Obviously they're doing a lot of these um, studies as well with the buying uh, powers and behaviors. So two-thirds of travelers still use online channels to make accommodation bookings, which is nothing new. Uh, one thing that is interesting, though, is um, when you look at these charts in the next following uh, slides, you'll notice that uh, gray is in global, millennials are in blue, uh, Generation X is in green, and then baby boomers, which I'm part of, is in the orange. So you could see what channels they book. Um, you can see that mobile app is definitely what the millennials are really leaning on. The other thing that was important is, and this is all generations combined, that price as well as the hab habitual booking um, location. So if they're used to going to Priceline to book their reservations, that actually um, tends to have them book online through OTAs versus coming to your uh, website or coming to your hotel uh, reservations uh, website, which is interesting. And as just as much as a, a price would go ahead and affect that booking pattern. And then the other thing for the millennials is again, um, same exact colors. Uh, you could see that the global which is up and coming, and the millennials, they definitely listen to their friends and relatives as far as where they should travel. And they also want to do some, some kind of an activity that they cannot do anywhere else. And you'll see um, in a couple more slides, you know, what those activities are. Must-haves. Um, In-room Wi-Fi, obviously, but then again, when you look at the uh, my generation, the baby boomers, um, in comparison to the millennials and the globals, you could see that is the key uh, for their where they stay. Breakfast is important. Um, safe deposit, not as important. Parking, somewhat important. But air conditioning, obviously, especially here in the United States, you don't see that as much in the European travelers. Now, this is the slide I was talking about. Uh, when they're looking at adventures, um, you could see, again, millennials, uh, it really... Uh, jumps up for the adventure travel, uh, scuba diving, skiing, snowboarding. Again, they want to go and experience what they can that they cannot experience anywhere else that they would have traveled to. This I thought was funny and interesting that um, personal consideration by generational, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, behavior towel uh, versus a pillow, which we always see, you know, kids dragging their pillows in. 
is becoming a number one thing that they actually bring to the hotel with them. Now, this slide really shows what the future looks like. If you notice, um, they basically put all the millennials in one bucket and everybody else in, in the separate bucket. So you could see that travel channels, they're not going to depend on them as much as we saw in, in uh, earlier slides. The official brand channels, <clears throat> excuse me, this is alarming because that's actually going to go down uh, from 66% of the population right now going into the brand channels or your hotel, if you're an independent hotel, to your website to find a reservation or book a reservation, that's actually going to go down to 27%. So that's why brands are really out there trying to engage um, everybody via social media so that they don't lose that um, booking uh, strength that we have right now as a brand. The other thing is the um, travel blogs. So these are basically like blogs, but they're video blogs. So you might have seen them on YouTube. In one minute, a person could share what their experience was like during their vacation or where they, they went on business or not. Um, you see a lot of Las Vegas hotels doing this. Uh, for example, they will go ahead and uh, do snipes of taping, checking into the hotel, going to the front desk, getting in the elevator, going all the way up to their room, checking into their room, walking into the bathroom, and doing a tour of their room and showing that within one minute. Or they could even share their weeks-long vacation in that one minute from getting into a flight, fl landing, going to a hotel, going to different locations, and so on and so forth. So this actually is going to grow even more. They did a statistic that Goldfish has a memory of um, eight uh, seconds uh, retention and humans are down to six. So you could see that visual is where it's going to be at more and more. So now let's look at how Marriott is doing against OTAs and third parties. So um, Hitwise is a company um, that actually looks at all the algorithms um, everything that is um, communicated online, booking patterns, uh, what commercial is out there, who clicked on what, and how they made their decision from looking to booking. So what they reported is they did a study from May 2016 through May 2017 to do a comparison year over year. And they found out that Expedia and Booking.com actually doubled Marriott's TV advertisement spent in that time frame. But at the same time, they only um, shifted share less than a percentage point from Marriott into their um, online booking engines. This is actually good news. Um, you know, TripAdvisor, uh, I'm sorry, Hitwise actually reported this out saying that it's really tough environment for hoteliers, which is true. We still depend on them. However, this is probably the lowest that we have seen them shift share from a brand like Marriott, which I, I'm hoping that will be the trend moving forward into the future. Okay, let's look at the importance of engagement and why brands and um, some independent hotels are now uh, purchasing software on their own to systematically push out there looking for guest feedback about their guest experience. So by doing this, what percentage do you think they actually increase these guest reviews coming back to the brands or coming back to the um, hotels, independent hotels? It, would it be by 50% by the systematic asking of these um, responding from the guest, 9%, 42% or 16%? So if you guess 50%, that is the correct answer. Um, they did a study, uh, systematic push and non-systematic push, um, how the guests react in responding regarding their guest uh, stay experience. So it actually went up from 30% um, feedback to 80% feedback from the guests that stayed at the hotel. They also found out that the guests that are now uh, not realizing that they could review, um, read reviews about that hotel, they actually stay and go through the website and they engage more on the website by 40% increase in page reviews. The other, of course, obviously, the lookers to bookers increased by 32%. So now you can see why it is important to have your royalty uh, loyalty members um, 
rewards members. Um, if they're not a reward member, go ahead and have them sign up so that they could get these surveys and then they could go ahead and respond and that'll increase your uh, rating for the hotel because we know for a fact more people post positive than negative, about 80%. So the more of that you see the postings on, the more it's going to increase your star rating for your hotel. Here is uh, one thing that we also looked at. Um, we looked at the of the Marriott hotels that we responded on behalf of, and we looked at that year to date and included 14 full service hotels, 111 uh, select service hotels, total number of rooms of 24,000. Um, I'm sorry, number of reviews is 24,000. So we looked at uh, responses with this uh, systematic push. So it's still about um, one quarter to three quarters GSS is still the strongest versus the MVRs, but that is growing year after year. Now, when you compare the Marriott reviews against the um, TripAdvisor push out there, Expedia's and so on, they're still demanding and controlling about 63% of this feedback um, versus Marriott reviews as a sitting at 37%. So our reliance on OTAs is not going to go away, but it's just a matter of closing that margin and again, creating those habits of individuals coming to your hotel website to book your, their reservations. And then the other thing is uh, benefits of um, we knew Cornell study that had came out in 2013. This is the latest that we could found of a university that actually did a similar study that what is the uh, advantage of pushing uh, guest comments, getting those back, and it actually increases your uh, rating. And if you're able to increase by 1% or one point star rating, your demand goes up 25%, and you could still grow your price by 9% without losing occupancy. So let's move on to the brand performances versus OTAs and third parties, what that looks like year over year. Um, here's another question, online booking share on brand websites. What brand is leading the pack in reservations, do you think, booking on their hotel websites? Do you think it's the Hilton Hotels, Marriott Hotels, IHG, or Hyatt Hotels? And if you guessed uh, Marriott Hotels, that's the correct answer. So when you look at the Wyndham Hotels, um, you notice that back in 2016 May, um, they only had a 2.85% uh, booking share against the other uh, brands. And then when you look at 2017, they actually grew it tremendously up to 9.61%. And the way they grew that is the reason is because they asked every guest, they really had a push out there to go ahead and sign up every guest that stayed at a Wyndham Hotel to become a loyalty member and go ahead and offer them uh, packages or stays or offers based on the information they have um, on their files. So that actually worked for them and they had a positive change of 6.76% year over year. Marriott is still the strongest. Um, when you look at Marriott, it's without the Starwood because it's, uh, they wanted to make sure it was apples to apples without that merging in there. Um, for some reason in this study, they did keep Sheraton Hotels separate than Starwood for whatever reason. So you could see that Marriott is still um, keeping their share in comparison to um, other brands and uh, they are still staying strongest up there. So now let's take a look at the hotel booking share, not just the brands, but also in that mix, the third parties, um, third party booking engines. So when you look at booking.com, they actually went up the highest. They actually shifted share from 10.8 to up to 13.2. It has a lot to do with their advertisement push lately, and they actually increased their share 2.45%. Wyndham, as I stated, they went up the highest um, of all the brands, and they now, in comparison to the third parties, 1.99% increase. And then um, below the purple line, you could see that's where we're tracking as brands. Um, at the same time, again, losing share to the third parties. However, that margin is closing year over year, which is great news. Online booking share for overnight stays. So which brand do you, the U.S. consumers choose to stay at in the last 12-month period? Do you think it's A, Marriott, B, I, G, C, Hilton, or D, Choice Hotels? And if you guessed Hilton, that's the correct answer. Um, they had the highest um, market share 
uh, of stays um, at their hotels. Now, when you look at, when you dissect this, when you look at the study a little further, uh, Hampton Inn definitely plays a role in that mix with Hilton. Again, Marriott, this Starwood was not included, so we'll see how that affects um, you know, the channel distribution out there and how they're uh, doing in their booking um, share. So what's in the horizon for hotels? Looking at all these generational behaviors, looking at what's going on, and then looking also at uh, what Star is saying. So Star, about a month ago, did announce um, their outlook uh, for year-end 2017 and what they think the growth might be for 2018. So they're looking at um, always the supply and demand. Supply actually is has gone up year over year from 16 to 17, and they think this is going to end up at 2%. Versus in 2018, a little bit more supply coming into play. Uh, so that'll be at a 2.1%. Now demand, they're predicting um, that even though, <clears throat> excuse me, supply went up too, demand stayed with that. But for next year, they feel the demand is going to go down. So this occupancy game is going to become um, a little bit more important. However, the brands will be increasing their ADR um, about two and a half percent year over year. So rev par increase would be flat uh, year over year from 2.3 in growth in 17 and then another 2.3 growth in 2018 is what they're predicting. Um, TripAdvisor, uh, they did a study about generational uh, purchasing behaviors again. And looking at that, they're also acknowledging that the newer generation are foodies. They're more involved with organic food, trying different things, flavors, fusion of different um, uh, food, and so on and so forth. And they feel that we're going to see an increase of um, people bringing, ordering deliveries, bringing into the hotel, and that hotels really don't have a choice with this except to accept it and move on. Now, I will share a little bit about brands and what they're doing about that as well. But, you know, obvious things, um, your in-room dining menus need to update them, make sure we're using the in-house advertisement on the elevators or tent cards or give coupons at the front desk. But one thing to make sure is obviously your Facebook page, make sure you do have it for your restaurant. And then you also have claimed your Google Plus page uh, for your restaurant, which is most important, so that you could go ahead and push those Facebook um, posts into your Google Plus page and be found um, uniquely for in-house room dining and so on on uh, Google searches. Now, the other thing is if a guest is ordering room service for the full service hotels or ordering just at the counter at Courtyard and taking up to their room, whatever that may be, to really ask them to go ahead and share their experience on your Facebook page and so on, and then make sure you do stay engaged with them. Now, the brand marketing efforts, um, I will share that in the next couple of slides. So with Marriott, what are they doing? Um, they're seeing all these trends, they're seeing the buy buying behaviors, so they know that social media is king to really start engaging your present guests and your future guests, those millennials, on social media more than anything else and personalize that engagement. So they've been working with um, Hyper, who uh, Disney has been working for years with, Pepsi, companies like Pepsi has been working with them uh, for years. So they went ahead and partnered with them. They've been doing a lot of tests um, and seeing how they could change that. And now they truly have a command center at Corporate Marriott, um, listening on social media, what is being posted, as soon as a guest is arrived at your hotel, by them on social media channels. And they want to make sure that there's brand ambassadors at your property so that you can go ahead and have a brand ambassador engage with them based on what they're conversing about on social media about your hotel. And if they have posted any photos, um, let's say on um, TripAdvisor, they could go ahead and pick that up or Instagram. And then they also, those ambassadors at your hotel could go ahead and ask permission to publish those guest uh, pictures on your Facebook page, on your website, and so on. And then the food and beverage consumption, um, they do want to keep an eye on that. Uh, they want to see what the patterns are 
Um, even with the royalty member, if they see that they order, uh, let's say, room service or they or always look for sushi, whatever that may be, so that you can have that information ahead of time or even when they're at the hotel so that you can go ahead and send them, hey, we have a sushi bar upstairs um, on the top floor, you know, in a full service hotel and basically gain followers across all social platforms, because that's the only way we're going to keep the future generations engaged with our hotels, with our brand. And the loyalty enrollment in addition to that, and again, increase those reviews that they push out there systematically, and it'll also increase your GSS, because as we know, 80% say positive, about 14% are neutral, and about 8% or 7, 6% of um, feedback is negative. And then obviously that also increases your TripAdvisor rating um, by pushing those positive reviews out there. Now here's a little bit of, um, at a quick glance, what they're talking about. So this is basically what they would be seeing from their iPhone or iWatch or their um, desktop or um, any apps that they may have, uh, conversations going on about your hotel. Now, here's an example. So this person um, basically went ahead and posted this picture um, about their uh, breakfast that they're having at the courtyard in Mexico. And the hyper software picks that up and reports it back to your ambassador, who's, uh, who's basically you have identified as your food and beverage ambassador, and he or she receives this and responds back, wow, that looks pretty good. Thanks for your visit. And then she engages back saying, oh, thank you, by the way, you know, I'm coming back and so on and so forth. And then he or she says, excellent, blah, blah, blah. And then um, this is um, also posted on TripAdvisor and given a five-star rating. So that's where it increases your uh, ranking on TripAdvisor. And now it's all about the food it's all about the experience of the stay at the hotel, not necessarily what they're saying about your um, their whole entire stay experience. And they do have tools. Uh, Marriott is um, might have already sent it to you if you're a Marriott hotel or will be sending it to you shortly. Um, basically, cheat sheets, uh, temple, template comments, um, how you could uh, respond back to that engagement piece, um, or you can go ahead and generate your own content based on what they're posting. And they kind of did a time of how long this type of engagement would take from your hotel level. So if you're doing this daily and to be successful, you really have to have those ambassadors identified at your hotel and really responding to what is being said out there on social media about your hotel. So um, if you do it with a template, it takes about 10 minutes. If you actually personalize it, another 15, um, uh, five more minutes more than that. Custom comments, um, that'll take a little bit longer, obviously. And then the surprise and delight moments. Those are the things that um, if they're looking for tea times, if they're talking about certain things that they want to do at the hotel, whatever that may be, or if you're looking at their uh, profile as... Um, rewards member and you know they like to golf then you can go ahead and uh, send them a message hey we have tea time still available or have them connect uh, with a, um, somebody that could go ahead and arrange that tea time whatever that may be but you can definitely find more information um, this is the URL uh, to go take a look at it or obviously your global source um, you will see a lot more information about this as well but this really is becoming um, the thing of the future, forget about responding within 48 hours, it's real time communication piece. And it's all social media, even if it's TripAdvisor, now it's just social media, it's no longer a third party booking engine. Um, the other thing that I did want to share, obviously, everybody does know now that Marriott did partner with Alibaba Group, uh, which was very clever. The reason that they did this is because of all the brands. Marriott has the highest um, presence currently with the Starwood merge in China. Uh, there's about 74 plus Marriott and Starwood hotels. And the whole idea behind it is really to understand those Chinese travelers, what they're accustomed to, what they're looking for, what are their um, booking patterns and so on and they've been really doing studies since 2012 
gearing up for this 2020 millennial push, which is equal to 234 million just from China alone, um, outbound travelers, and about 90% of that generation are the millennials or the um, global uh, generation that'll be traveling from there. So this is wonderful for Marriott. Um, they will be more accustomed to knowing the Marriott brands in China. So hopefully when they do travel globally, they will go ahead and utilize a Marriott hotel um, when they're looking at hotels in your areas. So what's Hilton, um, what have they done? Uh, what they have they been piloting with? Because every brand is trying to come up with their own answer. So um, what they're doing is a little bit different because they're using the Hilton Honors app uh, versus um, going through an app like Hyper that Marriott has chosen to do. So they want to have a direct customer relationship which is digital uh, direct relationship. They know and understand that that's really important and they want to tailor the experience uh, based on the knowledge that they collect about a guest. Um, they also found out that by simply offering packages or offering deals on the website, it doesn't work anymore. If anything, it confuses the guest and it actually results in lower conversion rates on the Hilton.com website. And they want to be able to solve guest problems and needs before they leave the hotel. So again, it's all about that relationship building, um, on time communication with the hotel guests while they're in the hotel. So they took 200 hotels in 2017 um, to do the pilot to see how this is going to work. When they did roll it out to all the Hilton hotels, um, they noticed that the uh, chat really has increased, the real-time chat. People now are requesting room to be cleaned at a specific time to talk about ATM that might be located in the lobby or nearby um, at a bank, and so on and so forth. Now, here is what Hilton has done in that in-room dining experience um, and also taking away that feeling that it's going to take too long for delivery and also it's going to be too costly. So now with this app, they could go ahead and alert the guest. The cheeseburger you ordered is on its way. It should be in your room within 10 minutes, whatever that may be, so that, again, they can... Um, let the guests know exactly where it is and have that relationship with the room service and their guests at the same time. Um, use of the, again, learning uh, behavior or booking for room and package recommendations and increase the bookings. Again, they want to keep their Hilton Honors members close to their heart um, and not switch over to another brand. And also, again, the newer generation, get them accustomed to become a Hilton Honors member um, because the studies show that they're going to get away from that. One clever thing that they did is they actually are now um, with uh, Google having digital room layouts. So if you can pick and choose the seat you're going to sit in on when you're flying, why not choose the hotel room you want to stay at when you get to a Hilton hotel? So they with the 200 hotels that they were piloting, there was actually use of this every 2.5 seconds with um, their Hilton Honors app, and individuals love that. They are able to go ahead and choose. The other thing that they are doing is uh, with Google Maps again, um, they will be able to look at the same exact um, view that they will have from their hotel room when they go ahead and op open up their uh blinds, shades, curtains, so that let's say a guest is um, really on a budget and they don't mind looking at a parking lot or looking at air conditioner units over a portico share um, rooftop. Now you won't have that guest disappointed because they know exactly what the view is going to look like from their guest room before they even get there. And the last thing about, again, the food and beverage component, uh, they are partnering with uh, Uber um, and they really didn't uh, mention too much about this yet as far as how they can go ahead and let the guests know, hey, um, we know you're a foodie, you like this type of uh, meals, whatever. 1 p.m., uh, there's still so-and-so available down the road from us and they have availability 1 p.m. lunch and we'll get you the Uber to go ahead and uh, take you, transport you there or have it delivered to your room. So again, 
the brands are looking at that component or keeping the share with food and beverage. Um, they're not taking it lightly that they're just going to have um, all these, you know, uh, foods carry ins coming in for that in room dining experience. So let's move on to IHG. So IHG looked at 2016 revenue contribution and what's going on with the OTAs. Again, trying to shift share to the web and mobile, trying to shift share to become, for them to become rewards members um, so that they could go ahead and retain that customer to book online on their site versus going to the um, third parties and so on. So they kind of divided uh, when they started their pilot into four components, the dream, what they need to do with their software to really enhance that planning stage and be involved with that guest, the booking stage. And then obviously when they do stay at that hotel, they do want to have that real time um, just as the Hilton and Marriott is looking into component within the IHG software. And they're building their own software versus looking for a third party. And they do realize Wi-Fi is more significant than ever before, um, that they do want to make sure that there is the bandwidth to reach every room at the end of the corridors, as well as the ones that are closer to the um, center of the building and so on. So then they looked at, okay, how can we build more loyalty through that guest experience? And, it, and again, in those uh, four components, buckets, um, they want to be able to tailor according to the past uh, booking patterns, preferences, um, so that if they were thinking of not maybe going to Mexico next year, and uh, now they could go ahead and offer them, hey, you could dream about this now and have your vacation in Mexico next year at the same time. And then the planning stage, obviously, um, looking at their budgets, looking at their uh, patterns again, looking at what their preferences are, booking, again, that location, be able to have that uh, compatibility of uh, near the top floor at the end, near elevator, whatever that may be, um, and so on, and then customizing their stay, uh, communicating them with the golf tee times once they check in, and how are they going to personalize their stay. So with IHG, uh, they actually did their uh, pilot study starting at the beginning of this year, and they've been testing and um, improving. They should be rolling it out uh, this month, next month, sometime soon, exactly what this new software capabilities are going to be. So stay tuned, and then they're going to roll it out, um, I would assume, end of this year, beginning of next year, and obviously update and tweak as they go along throughout, all the way up through 2020 and plus. So in conclusion, um, OTAs, they continue to shift booking share. We still rely on them, um, unfortunately, um, and we realize that. But at the same time, they are spending, outspending the brands, but at the same time, they're only shifting less than a percentage uh, share in bookings, which is great news for us. And hopefully that trend will continue on uh, as the millennial gener generation comes into play in that purchasing um, power. The third parties, such as TripAdvisor ratings, uh, they do continue to be lower than the loyalty member ratings. That's another reason why Marriott and IHG, uh, both and Starwood, post the loyalty member rating on the websites. Hilton still um, is using the TripAdvisor rating of this uh, on their website. But again, that's great news. That's just going to increase your um, search engine optimization because you are going to have a higher rate from your loyalty members. So if at any time, this is the most important thing to sign up anybody and everybody that comes into your hotel that might not be a member um, because you're going to rely on that for the future success occupancy of your hotel. And look at your brand marketing efforts. They're looking at these generational behaviors, the geographic buying behaviors. They have so much information. Even if you just go into Global Source or um, through Medallia, whatever uh, brand you're, you have, twice a year just to read up and um, look at what's going on, what they're sharing with you. It's really important to stay on top of that. Uh, personalization, that digital real-time communication is more important than ever. Um, maybe that's why Hilton came up with that 24-hour mandate or responding versus the 48 hours with Marriott. And maybe Marriott next year will go to 24 hours, who knows, um, because it has to be relevant, it has to be new, and it has to be fresh. 
Uh, that's what people are looking into. And then the lastly, uh, keep those images coming. Make sure that you are asking to utilize the images being posted by your guest, that you can use it on your Facebook. So if you do have somebody who at your hotel is uh, looking at your Facebook and posting um, uh, pictures, that it's better to post, obviously, your guest pictures selfies, whatever that may be, or a picture of the food that they're having versus you having a professional to take and put out there. And go into uh, travel vlogs on YouTube. Take a look and see. Um, you never know. A guest might have posted something about your hotel, a one-minute video that you can ask or you can go ahead and share that um, blog uh, URL uh, connectivity and so on. So that's what it looks like um, for 2018 and beyond. I uh, hope that you did find this educational. Uh, if you do want more information um, about our services, uh, we could help you with any and every aspect of what I shared today. Um, and obviously, we're interested in responding um, for your hotels to your guest reviews and take away that anxiety that it is taken care of 24-7, 365 days a year. Here's Marissa's information to connect with. Um, and those of you that might be just on audio, um, her email address is marissa m at irespons.com and her phone number is 561-339-7972 to connect with. And we look forward to hearing from you. And thank you again for joining our webinar today. And we look forward to making you our clients. And for those of you that are clients, thank you for joining our webinar today. Take care.